Amen. Come on, let's stay in that moment for a minute. Everybody lift our hands right there. This is a good moment. Band, we can keep playing right there. This is a moment where we say, Father, we take a moment just to thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. We thank you, Father, for leaving the 99 and coming back for us to one. Father, we thank you, Lord, that with all of our flaws and with all of our mistakes, you still call us a masterpiece. You still call us good. You still call us great. And so, Father, we want to go into the message, but we don't want to move from this moment. And we just want to say, God, thank you for having, having your way in our life. We say, Holy Spirit, do whatever you want to do in our life, God. If you want to change us, if you want us to grow, whatever you want us to do, Father, in this moment, we say, you can do it. Everybody say, you can do it, God. Come on, say it. Say, you can do it, God. Father, you hear your children tonight, man. Whoo, it's a presence in the room, y'all. We hear, you hear your children tonight, God. And God... We say tonight as we go into the teaching, God, that we are open and available to receive what you have for us tonight. Father, I believe that tonight you're going to mark something new in our life, and we give you permission to do it. We just say yes to your will. We say yes to your way, and we say, Lord, tonight, God, leave a mark on our life that can never be erased. In Jesus' name, we agree. And can everybody shout amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all can go back to your seats. Y'all can go back to your seats. We're excited to be here tonight. Y'all excited about tonight? Y'all excited to be at 608 tonight? Good, man. It's good to see y'all faces again. Y'all look good. It's good to see y'all come on, came on back. Everybody had a good week? School was good this week? No. Oh, I'm sorry. School was good for you? Good, good, good. Well, man, I'm so excited that you guys came back tonight. Um, the worship team was amazing, man. Like, I'm super, I've been crying in the back, so got to get myself together a little bit. But, man, tonight, we're just excited about um, what God is going to do. And honestly, um, I'm excited to do this with all of y'all. So I'm Quentin. If y'all don't know me, um, I get an opportunity to serve here with our 608 team, man. And I get an opportunity tonight just to share what I believe um, God placed on our heart tonight. Y'all, small group start tonight. <laughs> Man, I'm excited about it. It's going to be super good. And um, we're just going to go right into it. Can we go right into it? Now, last week we got on a little roller coaster. So I think we're going to be on a little roller coaster tonight, too. Is that all right? Cool. So tonight, man, we're starting our new series called Check Your ID. Okay, I'm going to try it again. Y'all didn't get excited how I wanted you to. We're starting a new series tonight called Check Your ID. It is a series of four-part teaching that we're going to do. Um, a couple are going to be teaching. Then we're going to do some different things like that that let everybody understand it. But we're really going to be talking about identity, what it means for us to be in God. And the intro that I want to share with everybody tonight, man, is that it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what your family have been around. It doesn't matter what you did today. There is a purpose and a plan of God on your life, and God has called you to be special. He's called you to be great. He's called you right where you are. I, I just want you to know, and I just feel like I need to say it right now. God wants to use you in eighth grade, in seventh grade, in sixth grade, in ninth 10, 11, 12th grade, God want to use you in middle and high school to do the thing that he has called you to do. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's go ahead and put the practice in for the night. So when I say something halfway good, y'all supposed to say what? Amen. All right, so let me try it again. God has called all of you guys, middle and high school, to do something great for the kingdom of God. Amen. Good, man. And listen, I just don't want y'all to shout it because it make me feel good. I want y'all to actually agree with that. Like you agree with the statement that God has called you, God has purposed you. And I'm a little turned tonight, so I'm about to calm down a little bit. But I just want y'all to understand, man, that right where you are, like, when I was in sixth grade, I was just trying to pass a test to go to the next grade. I wasn't really studying God. But y'all have a church that says, you know what? We're going to invest in you because we believe who God has called you to be. We believe, man, that people may say things. Your family may say things. You may not have everything you want right now. But I am telling you, man, that just because you don't have those things doesn't mean that God still don't want to use you. Like, he still wants to use you where you are. Y'all feel me tonight? 
Okay, so Jeremiah 1 5, we did this scripture last night, but it's, it's also our anchor scripture we're gonna use. It says, I knew you before I formed you in the mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Now, y'all, this is like my favorite scripture. Like, this is my favorite ever scripture because it shows me that people's opinion of me now really doesn't matter because God already had a purpose before I was here. Like, before my mom and before my dad, before your mom and dad got together and created you, God said, you know what? I have a purpose on your life. What's your name right here? Brianna. Brianna. God said to Brianna, everybody say, hey, Brianna. God said to Brianna that before Brianna showed up to Heartland tonight, God already had a purpose on her life. Like, even in this section, somebody shout out your name over here. It don't matter. Somebody. Who? Mason. Mason. Right there. What's up, Mason? Everybody say, what's up, Mason? Like, before Mason showed up tonight looking as handsome as he does, God already had a purpose on his life. And not just for Mason, not just for Brianna, but for everybody in the room, before you got here tonight, God already had a purpose on your life. I already had a plan for your life. So let me get into this, man. I feel like I'm a little too excited. Y'all ready for the word? Everybody say, yeah. Yeah. So tonight, we're going to talk from the perspective of labeled to unique. The idea that labels are, labels are all on us, where those labels come from, people come from family members, or even labels that we place on ourselves. Each one of us have labels, and sometimes those labels push us to feel undervalued and not appreciated. A lot of times we have labels of rejection. Sometimes we have labels of fear. Sometimes we have labels of sadness. Sometimes we have labels of, of, of not enough. Sometimes we have labels of of being critiqued so much by people because we didn't get chosen for things. There are labels that all of us carry in our life. Some of us carry labels of insecurity. I carry that label sometimes. Can I be real tonight? Y'all gonna let me be real or no? Like, yeah, I can be? Cool, cool, cool. So sometimes all of us carry labels. Some of us carry labels of being scared, being terrified. But although we are labeled, God still, I'm going to say it again, he still calls us to be unique. Sometimes, I want y'all to get this, man. Sometimes what people can't understand or figure out, they label. In actuality, they don't know what to name you, so they label you by a thing. But the thing that God has already called you is unique. Amen. So the, 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 the explanation of the understanding of the definition of unique is being the only of its kind. Unlike anything else. That's good news, man. Y'all didn't turn up how I wanted you to. So I'm going to do it again. Everybody say unique. Unique Unique means being the only of its kind, unlike anything else. Like, it's a lot of people in this room tonight, but do you know that there's a specific DNA that God has for you? Like, there's a specific DNA with how you came in, where you come from, what you've done. There's a specific DNA, and there's an intricate thing that God wants you to accomplish in the earth. I'm telling you, man, like I grew up, I had two brothers, and all of us kind of did the same thing. But I came to the realization that although we may have the same last name, there is still a distinct and specific purpose on my life. Y'all understand what I'm saying tonight? We're going to get into it, man. So... In this little story I want to share with y'all, man, it's really like a drama-filled story. And in this drama-filled story, I'm going to read it for the time tonight. So let's go to Genesis 29, um, 16 through 30. So I'm going to read a lot right here, but it's just for context because when we go into it, I want y'all to really understand. Everybody say, yeah. Yeah. So Genesis 29, it says, now Laban had two daughters. The older daughter was named Leah. Everybody say Leah. Leah. And the younger was Rachel. Everybody say Rachel. This is funny, y'all. It says, there was no sparkle in Leah's eyes. <laughs> but Rachel had a beautiful figure and lovely face. That really means that Le- Leah wasn't cute, y'all. The Bible was messy. Like, he's like, Leah wasn't even cute. It says, since Jacob was in love with Rachel, he told her father, I'll work for you for seven years if you will give me, Rachel, your younger daughter, as my wife. Laban replied, agreed. Everybody say agreed. I'd rather give her to you than anyone else. Stay and work with me. So Jacob worked seven years to pay for Rachel. He really, really wanted Rachel, y'all. He worked seven years for Rachel, but his love for her was so strong that it seemed to him but a few days. 
Finally, the time came for him to marry her. I have fulfilled my agreement, Jacob said to Laban. Now give me my wife so I can sleep with her. So Laban invited everyone in the neighborhood and prepared a wedding feast. But that night, when it was dark, Laban took Leah to Jacob and he slept with her. I'm going to read real fast, y'all. But when Jacob woke up in the morning, it was Leah. Everybody say Leah. What have you done to me, Jacob ragged at Laban? I worked seven years for Rachel. Why have you tricked me? But when Jacob woke up in the morning, it was Leah. What have you done to me, Jacob ragged at Laban? I worked seven. Okay, I read it already. I'm sorry. It is not our custom here. I can't read tonight, child. What's wrong? Everybody say, what's wrong with you? So 26 says, it's not our custom here to marry off a younger daughter ahead of the firstborn, Laban replied. 27, but wait until the bridal week is over. Then we'll give you Rachel too, provided, provided you promise to work another seven years for me. We got two more to go, y'all. So Jacob agreed to work seven more years. A week after Jacob had married Leah, Laban gave him Rachel too. So Jacob slept with Rachel too. Jacob, he had a lot going on, man. Jacob slept with Rachel too, and he loved her. Y'all funny, okay? He loved her much more than Leah. He then stayed and worked for Laban an additional seven years. I need some water. I'm kidding. Jacob valued Rachel more than Leah. That's a lot. I'm reading tonight. Tonight I don't want to talk from the subject. I want y'all to scream. Everybody say name brand. Name. Come on, say it a little bit louder. Everybody say name brand. name brand. It's this idea, y'all, that we some of us are labeled, but again, we're unique. But the reason why I to- chose the title name brand is because all of us have a name. All of us have a specific name, like where we come from. Everybody has a name. But the question I want to ask everybody tonight is who are we branded to? Are we branded to Jesus or are we branded to our friends? Y'all don't want to be real with me tonight. Come on. Thank you, bro. He said Jesus. Like, are we branded to social media? Are we branded to being on the football fan? All those things are great. But where is our foundation of branding come from? And our foundation of branding has to come from Jesus. At the end of the day, no one actually knows who we really are and who God is literally called and predestined us to be. Nobody, like, really knows that, y'all, because God has already branded and named us a name. He's given us a name. Like, We're not just talking about identity because it sounds good called check your ID. We are trying to get all of us to understand that God has given all of us a name. And since he's given us a name, we now exchange what, I really need a water trip, but thank you, bro. I appreciate the water. Okay, thirsty. All right, thank you, bro. Appreciate that. Okay. I might take a little sip a little bit later. All all of us, God has given us a name. So today... I want to encourage everybody, man, that even if no one co-signs you, God has still called you. Like, that's really what I'm talking about tonight. Like, even if nobody say, oh, your shirt is nice, or your shoes are nice, or you look good, or your hair look good, or your haircut look good, or we're happy that you're here tonight, even if nobody will ever say that to you, God has already given you a name. And the thing that I love since God has given us a name, man, the thing I love about that is that since God has given us a name, it's like we're not out here alone just because we have a name. Like, we serve the name that's above all names. Like, we serve the name that can exceed everything that we do. We serve the name that can exceed our family background. And just in case you don't know, I feel like y'all know, but just in case you don't know, that name is Jesus, man. Like, that name go above everything that we can do. So, some of y'all tonight came in, and they gave some of y'all some labels. Anybody got labels tonight? Did they give y'all some labels? Bring the labels to me. Walk them up here. Y'all, walk them up here. Put this on. Y'all, walk the labels to me. What's up? What's your name, man? Confused. Huh? I'm confused. Your name is Confused? Yeah. Because what happens, y'all, y'all pay attention right here. What happens is, this is so good. What happens is, y'all hurry up. Let's go. Y'all ready? I think I need some water now. My, my throat dry. All right. So what happens is, some of y'all get on this side for me over here. Get on this side if you don't mind. Aren't y'all proud of y'all friends and y'all peers tonight for coming up? Good job. So what happens sometimes, y'all, is when we go to school and when we, when we meet people, the number one thing they try to do is give us, what is this? What's your name? Confused. Confused. Where do you want to put that at on me? It don't matter. Wherever you want to put it. Oh. Confused, thank you. Confused. So when I do yours, y'all can go have a seat, okay? They call me confused. What's your, confused again? 
Have you ever met friends and they start labeling you just because of who they think you are? What this is? Helpless. Oh, my God. I'm not doing that one yet. What's your name over here? Brody. Well, what's the thing name? What they call me? Trash. Trash. Oh, my God. Lost. Oh, my God. Lonely. O-M-G. They call me lonely. What's this? Rejected. Rejected. I'm going to wait on you because y'all got some bad stuff on that side. What's yours? Failure. Fa- what? <laughs> okay. Go ahead and put it on me, man. It's cool. Thank you. What's yours, bro? Coward. A coward. Oh, my God. Okay. We're going to get serious tonight. What's yours, bro? Sad. Sad. Okay. Just, <laughs> you just slap it on my shoulder, bro. Like, <laughs> ugh. Okay. It's no space. Y'all got to y'all have something good. Y'all got to have some good. It's really good. Okay. And what happens sometimes, y'all, is before I do them, what happens is we know sometimes that our friends have said all these things about us. About us. Like, we know our friends have said all these things. But guess what we do? Everybody say what? We go back to the bad stuff of our friends. What we got? Scared. Scared. Terrified. Terrified. Wow. 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 What happens, y'all, hear me, what happens is a lot of us walk around like this all of our life. A lot of us walk around with so many labels on our life. And so we come in church like, you know, sing the songs and do what we got to do. We have fun. Like, we play our sports. We on Instagram. We on TikTok. And all those things are great. But guess what happens, y'all? We still walk around with labels. And when people see us, the first thing they, they, they see is they see these labels that's on our life. Like, they see that we're sad. They see that we're lonely. They see that we're confused. And it's like, in life, sometimes, man, what keeps repeating itself is the labels keep coming back on our life, back on our life, and we don't know what to do. We take Instagram pictures with the label, y'all. We go to parties and we play nine swear and we, we, we play cornhole and all of that with labels on our life. And that's why it's important to come to 608, man. Yeah. It's not important to come to 608 because we just want y'all to do something on a Sunday night. We want you to come to 608 because guess what? All of us have labels on our life. Like, we want you to come to 608 because you have leaders that are going to go into small groups in a second. Like, they're going to help us with these labels. And I don't know if the leader's going to tell the truth, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I got labels on my life. Leaders, y'all got labels on y'all life too? All of us got labels, so we are all in this together because all of us have labels. So what do we do about the labels? How do we manage the labels? How do we, in life, how do we go through every single day with the labels. My first point tonight is don't allow the labels of others to stop you. Like, don't allow these labels that is on your life to stop you from still becoming everything that God has called you to become. Like, you know what, man? I may have these labels on my life, and I may be still working something out with God, but I'm still going to be in my small group. I'm still going to be in community. I'm still going to show up the 608. I'm still going to show up the church because at the end of the day, if I can handle the labels by myself, I can just take it off. But here's the thing about a label that I love sometimes, man, is that I can take it off, but guess what most times happens? I put it back on myself. When the Lord, verse 31, when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he enabled her to have children, but Rachel could not. Uh, could not conceive. The labels and the situation of pain that Leah was in could have stopped her from producing and being who she was called to be, but God still enabled her to produce, although she was still in the same situation. What am I explaining tonight? Is that although there are labels on your life and although these things are on your life, God still can use you with the labels. Like, God still can allow you to worship him and serve him and give and be great to your friends and obey your parents and do your homework. Y'all doing your homework? Yeah. Amen. Like, we got the people that's doing So God can do all of that with the labels. Last week I told you that you can, you can belong here before you start even behaving here. What am I saying is that although these labels are on my life, although these things are on my life, God still can use me. God still can use you with your labels, man. And, you know, I'm about, to, I'm about to go in a little bit. So y'all ready? Everybody say, I'm ready. Like, some of y'all may have the, the thinking or the ability that just because 
You may not have worries in your life or your family is at a certain place. There's still labels that's on everybody's life. The thing that I had to understand, man, is that just because my family name may be this, or I may have this, or I may have that, that doesn't make me obsolete to labels coming on my life. That doesn't make me, you know, immune to labels that may come on my life. So don't look at it tonight like, oh, well, I guess he's talking to my friend. No, baby, I'm talking to you because all of us have labels. I'm almost done. Verse 33, she soon became pregnant again and gave birth to another son. She named him Simeon for she said, the Lord heard that I was unloved and has given me another son. 34, then she became pregnant a third time. Y'all, she having all type of babies out here. And gave birth to another son. He was named Levi, for she said, surely this time my husband will feel affection for me since I have given him three sons. Let me give you my second point, and then I'm going to explain it. Just because you're labeled doesn't, doesn't mean you're not approved, man. This girl, Leah, she kept having babies because she wanted somebody to approve her. So every time she had a baby, she thought, oh, I'm going to have this baby, now my husband going to want me. I'm going to have this baby, now my husband going to want me. Now I'm going to have this baby, now my husband going to want me. Let's bring it to our day. I'm going to talk about this person that I know I'm not supposed to talk about so I can be in this friend group. Can we talk real tonight? I'm going to go comment on this person's stuff because I want their approval. I'm going to go do this and do that. I'm not going to show up to church because that may seem lame. But at the end of the day, your friends can't save you, but God can save you. Man, y'all ain't come. Y'all ain't come. No one will be able to value you the way that Jesus will value you. No one will be able to take a label off your life that has happened in your life if you don't allow Jesus to do it. Can I be real tonight? I asked last week, can I be real? Y'all sure y'all want me to be real? So, when I was, like, young, man, I want y'all to hound in and listen to me. When I, was, when I was young, when I was, like, y'all age, like, your age that you are now. I'm almost done. When I say this, I'm done. We go into small groups. When I was y'all age, I, you know, used to be around, like, my family and stuff like that, hung with my family, did all those things, and those things were super great. And... You know, I had two brothers, and so me and my brother would always want to play like this 2K. Well, it wasn't 2K at the time, but like Madden, you know, football games and, you know, shooting games, all the rough games, right? Y'all like playing games and stuff like that? Like, you know, I want to play all those games. So in order, we're about to go here, y'all. In order for me to sometimes play those games, they would always say, Q, you can play the racing game. You can play Grand Theft Auto or something like that. You can play the little card game. They, they call them soft games or something like that. You can play those games. But the caveat, y'all, was in order for me to play those games, I had to do sexual acts on another human being. In order for me to play those games, I had to be continually sexually abused by a cousin that was a guy that was in my life in order for me to play a game, constant, over and over again. Each and every time I wanted to play the game because nobody else wanted to accept me amongst my family, I said, you know what, I'm just going to do what I got to do to make sure that I play a game. I mean, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm seven, eight, nine, ten, just to play a game. After going through years of that, I'm like, man, you know, it sucks, but I get to play the game. Like, I could just play the game. I get to just be around people. I get to just be a part of a label. I get to just be, be, be a part of a group. I get to just be a part of something. I get to just be like I'm in a circle or in a vibe or something like that. Now, this may seem very uncomfortable for you, but it's real. And what am I saying? I don't know what your story is. And I'm coming back. I don't know what your story is. I don't know what you may have gone through, what you may have faced. It may not be as extreme. But what am I saying is that all of us have a story that sometimes allow us to be labeled. And we do things to make us continue to go over and over again. And from that moment, man, after all that happened, I thought that doing that was going to allow me to feel better as a man about myself. 
I was young. So now, I'm 26 now. Moments leading up and years leading up to me getting older and stuff like that, I'm wondering why I'm trying to be like somebody else or do a certain things. I'm like, you know, I didn't have my dad. That may be it. I'm like, what's, what's, what's really happening? It wasn't until I prepared this sermon, man, that I felt like God put it on my heart to share that because a lot of things that I do now, a lot of things that I face now, a lot of things that even the way I think sometimes, even, even me feeling insecure, can I be real, real, can, y'all, can I be real, real with y'all tonight? Like, even before I came out, I'm shedding tears because I don't think that I can preach a message to y'all. Like, even before I'm in the back watching y'all, woo, for a game and get candy, and I'm like, God, how can I lead and pastor all, like these students? How can I walk with them on their journey? And it started not when I got to Heartland. It started when I was your age, man. That's when it started. And to this day, I have to go home and see the person that did that to me. So how do I manage that every day? How do I go through it every day? I don't go through it with my own strength because my strength is not strong enough to take that. I don't know what you're facing, man, but your strength, how cute or handsome you are, it's not strong enough to handle that. So I walk around Each and every day with the conscious mind in the back of my mind, knowing that I'm labeled because of a situation that I was vulnerable and innocent in. So each and every day, I'm trying to tell myself in the mirror, oh, you're smart. Like, you're called by God. You can do this. Like, I'm about to go real, real with y'all. Then we about to go, like, I just feel like I need to say this to y'all tonight. Like, this ain't no little baby little Bible teaching. This is the real thing because all of us face things, man. Like each and every day I show up and I'm excited to be here and I'm, I'm, I'm just figuring out like, God, can I actually do it? And I'm asking the wrong question because I'm asking about my ability and not God's ability. I share that story, man, not for y'all to feel pity or to feel whatever about me. I shared that story because as long as I walk around with the labels that has been placed on my life. I feel like I stay in that moment. I stay in that space. I stay there each and every day. So how do I I get through that? What do I do? I come to church. I know, right? I do all that. But how do I get through that? How do I manage that? Somebody say it. Say it again. That's how I manage it. Everybody say Jesus. Y'all can stand, man. I'm done. I want to stop. I think this is a good place to stop. Y'all can stand right where you are. We're going to have a a moment right here, man. Right in the place of where I am, we're going through those things. I have Jesus, yeah. And so many times, that's where a lot of us like to stop. I got Jesus. Woo! Jesus. Woo! Woo! That's great, and I'm glad we have Jesus. But Jesus has put people on this earth to help us walk through those things as well. And that's why community is so important. That's why small groups are so important. Because although I'm labeled, although I see all these things in my life, although all these things show up each and every day, all, all these things come in my life, I now tie back to a source that can help me with those things. I tie back to a source knowing that although I have those labels and things in my life, I'm not branded by what happened to me. I'm branded by Jesus Christ. I'm branded knowing that there is a name that's above every name. There is a name that exceeds my expectation. There is a name that says, you know, you've gone through all of that, but there's still something greater on your life that you can accomplish. And I am sharing this without that because I want you to understand, man, that you may not go through what I went through, but there may be something in your life. You may feel like you're not handsome. You may feel like you're not cute. You may feel like something on your life. There may be something on your life that you feel. And I am telling you, man, I went through so many years of trying to handle the pain, but it it wasn't until I submitted it to Jesus, that's when things started turning around and changing for me. Can we all like just close our eyes and lift our hands tonight? Father, I thank you for this, 
group of people. I thank you, Lord, for these students, God. I thank you, Lord, that even in the space of where we are, even in the space of how we may be labeled or see ourselves, God, we lift our hands tonight to say that we may be labeled, but we still are unique. Y'all pay attention. You're good. We're called by God. We're predestined by God. Just how Leah went through so many things, Father, even in the story, Leah even got to a place, God, where she said, now I will praise the Lord. And then she stopped having children. So many things happened in that story. And God, just like that situation where the situation did not change, but your goodness is still good. Your grace is still good to us. Lord, there may be a label on our life right now that we are probably thinking about right now where our friends may have said a thing, where our friends may have said something. But Father, tonight, all those, those labels may be there. We get to a place where we just surrender it to you and we say, God, we may be labeled by people, but we're branded by you. And Father, we thank you for being good. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. amen. Those labels that are there, that are here, are still on my shirt that's here. And it's not, man, until I get to a place that, you know what? I'm tired of, like, living with these labels. I'm tired of having these labels that's in my life. So what I do is, is I get to a place where I say, you know what, man? I got to turn this thing out. Like, I can't just be walking around like this. This shirt ugly, right? With me walking around with this on. So inside out. Thank you. Who said inside out? Thank you. We're about to turn this thing out, man. Everybody say, turn the shirt inside. Turn the shirt the right way. Everybody say, turn the shirt the right way. Man, when I turn the shirt the right way, I got a shirt on under here. When I turn the shirt the right way, here's what you start seeing, man. Man, y'all come on. Y'all turn up with me if y'all going to do it. Like, we start seeing, man, that, you know, I got this thing going on in my life, but it gets to a place, man, where we all going to say this together. And I got these words on my shirt. And although that I didn't write it well, the words still remain the same, man. And the word that remained the same... Woo, the word that remained the same, man. Everybody say, y'all got it. Everybody say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Everybody say, redeemed, redeemed. Forgiven, forgiven, chosen, chosen seen, seen, love, love talented, talented, creative, creative confident, confident, motivated, motivated prepared, prepared, unique, unique anointed, anointed, accepted, and approved. I will be all I was created to be. And this will be my best year yet. In Jesus' name, everybody shout amen right where you are.